Well, welcome friends. We thank you for joining us today. We hope that the word that's about to take place will bless your heart. So get ready for this great word from our guest speaker today. Now, can we just redirect that to God? He's the reason why we're here. He deserves it. I'm just a man. I'm just like you. But our God, God, we give you this glory. We give you this honor. You may be seated. If you don't mind, I'm going to get comfortable. Now, this chair isn't my chair. This is a special chair. This chair is for someone special. When I was asked to, to speak, the Lord immediately began to give me instructions And I, I, I searched for a word. I said, Lord, I'm dry. I need a word. My well is dry. I, I prayed. I cried. I was like, God, you got to give me something. Right? And they told me this a month, a month and a half in advance. And God didn't give me my word. Pastor Jeff, God didn't give me my word four days until I, <laughs> I had to preach. And I said, you know what, God? I'm just going to walk by faith. If you don't give me a word, I know that you're just going to drop it in me because you're that type of God. But he told me, he said, treat this like your C group. Now, in our C groups, what I do is one day I was, I was preparing. My wife was cooking. I was cleaning. And the Lord said, whenever you're getting the seating arrangement and everything prepared where everyone is going to sit, he said, pull me up a chair. He said, pull me up a seat. I want to dwell with my people. And so he instructed me to do the same thing today. He said, treat this as a seat group. He said, pull me up a chair. So I want you to understand that the king is sitting in our midst. And so right now, God, I invite you in. I invite you in, God. You see what's attached to your people. God, you see our struggles. You see our hang-ups. You see our habits. You see where we fall and fail. God, we invite you in. We invite you in this place, God. We invite you in. Father, have a seat. Have a seat, Lord. I give honor to Pastor Josh and Lady Kay and uh, Bishop Duchess, my beautiful wife, and to my mother, uh, Mama B, for she's always pouring into me. And I came here yesterday to pray and just get myself mentally prepared. And the Lord opened me up to some, some things some spirits that are attached to his people. And he said, I'm not showing you these things for you to be scared. I'm showing you these things so you would know how to fight the enemy. You see, there's, there are spirits. If we believe in a God, we believe that there's, a, there's an opposing force. We can all agree to that, right? That are attached to us or attached to people that, you know, they're strongholds and, and, and bondages that people are trying to get out of. And I want you to be aware that there's a demonic force of hell that is trying to oppose the people of God. You see, we can't just come to church, sit in our pew and say, you know what, this is, this is my duty. This is what I'm going to do today. We can't come to church to get comfortable. This is a fight. This is a race. There's an opposing force. Do not get comfortable where you are. Okay, the Lord is pulling me in a different direction. 
sister uh, Casey. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Casey, Charles Claire, Cassie. You, sister. In prayer this morning, the Lord brought you before me. And what he showed me, and I'm humble at this, and what he showed me was your son, Nate. And God was talking to him, and he was talking back to God. They have conversation with each other. And God says this. He says, rejoice in this, that he's with you. He hears your prayers. Your family is covered. Don't worry about that. You're an intercessor. Walk in that. Walk in that. I'm going to need the help of the intercessors today because I feel like God is going to bring us to a different dimension of intercession and intimacy. Sister Keisha, Lady Kay, I'm very... Uh, cautious of the word that I say you know the Lord thus says the Lord and I'm I check and double check with God and when he gives me something I be like Lord you sure this is it and he said walk in it and he did the same thing for me but I was looking at you as you were worshiping with pastor and I looked at your dress and God immediately opened my spirit up to to me it looks like like a galaxy like it was stars it was like the universe right and the Lord said this the enemy would speak things to you because he don't have the authority to stop it, right? He would try to cause you to believe some things like, oh, this is the furthest I'm going to go or, you know, I'm just going to be this or, you know, God's not going to use me in this area. God says this. He says he's taking the limits off of Pastor Josh's ministry and your ministry and everything you sow into it, God says he's going to bless it. He's taking the limits of house of prayer. God is taking the roof off of house of prayer. He said, what we sow and what you sow into the house, God is saying, he's going to bless it. He's taking the limits off. Hallelujah. There was a brother here I saw. I don't know if he left. Tall brother had dreads. Uh, you. I see you. White shirt? Is that a white shirt? I don't have my glasses on, brother. Yeah. Yeah, my, my, my young black brother. Yeah, you. Yeah. Can you stand up, please? Yeah. What's your name, brother? Jason. Okay, this is what the Lord showed me. The Lord showed me you standing with a suit on. And he says, he is mine. God says, you are his. You are his. Now, he opened me to your struggles, the things that you struggle with. But God says, you are his. And he says, when you get in line with his word, and when you get that intimate relationship with God, when you begin to converse and you get serious about this thing, God said, there's going to be a door that you're going to walk through. And I see other young black men standing behind you, walking behind as you go through that door. Amen. Welcome that. God has so much for you, brother. If you're not serious about the things of God, right now is the time. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's a, a level of intimacy that God is going to want us to walk through. He's going to bring us to a different dimension. In our Friday night intercessory prayers, the Lord had opened us up to just a different dynamic of his spirit. But this is a choice. To go deeper is a choice. It's a choice. You either can run from it or you can humble yourself and say, God, I may not understand everything, but I choose to take a step forward into the depths. I'm just getting to my word. It 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 13, and you may stand for the reading of the word. Brother, God has shown me that you have a very, I guess the word is malleable. Uh, you have a, a heart after God and he's, he's shaping it. And he's forming it. And God says, stay the course. The world is pulling at you. Old ways, that old flesh is pulling at you. Sometimes the old mindset is pulling at you. But when that happens, God is wanting to do something special in your life. And that's just the door you got to walk through. That's the dying daily. God has so much more for you than where you are right now. You have a special anointing in your life. And God wants you to dig deeper in that word. You have, you have questions. You ask God. And God has the answers. But you're going to find it in the word of God. There's a cup that God prepares for you every morning. But some days, and it's not just him, it's, it's a lot of us. Some days, we walk past that cup. And we go throughout our day with an empty cup and when things happen we try to drink and we don't know how to God says drink from that cup he's going to give you more of a revelation of himself and when you do that it's going to cover her and the babies because there's a target on you there's a target on you hell is mad at you I see when God saved you and delivered you from some things, hell was angry, and they did everything they can do to try to get you back. But God put a hedge around y'all. And those things can't do you any more harm. But the enemy can scream over the fence and get you to believe don't be so easily persuaded. Keep walking in what you know. I see a path and it's golden footsteps. God says, follow the footsteps in this hand. And let's just pray for them right now. In the name of Jesus, God cover them. In the name of Jesus. Cover them. We rebuke any lie the enemy is speaking over them right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Let it be done. In Jesus' name. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? All right. I'm just trying to be obedient, y'all. Hand of grace. Can you step out, young sister? Come stand by your mama. She's up here in the front. Pastor said I have liberty, y'all. So. About three or four times God brought you before me. And he just spoke your name again to me. And mama, don't worry about her. Life is life. Things are going to pull at her. She's going to go through, you know, uh, natural desires and wants. But there's a covering for mama that's going to, to daughter. God told me this this morning. He said, 
you're going to go further than what mama did. You're going to win twice as many souls as mama did. So mama, you walk in that word. Yes, the world wants her, but there's a hedge about you that the world can't touch you. And you walk in that. Raise your hands. Mama let that intercession out. Pray a covering over her. For God, you see her heart, Lord. She has a heart after you. Let it be done. Mother Loretta, she, now we cut her grass, my brother and I. I don't know why she hired us. I mean, we're like the worst grass cutters, but she's so sweet. And for some reason, she always talks, she gravitates to my brother Brandon. She don't have nothing to do with me. She come over there, she's like, Brandon? I'm like, yeah, I'm here too, but he's right there. And they just have this blissful conversation. And I'm like, okay, I'm just the black sheep over here. <laughs> but when we were cutting your grass, the Lord just totally engulfed me. I was, I was, I was on the, the zero turn and I, I couldn't do nothing but throw my hands up. And this is what the Lord told me. He said, you are walking on holy ground. He said, the grounds that you and Brandon are cutting are, are prayer stained grounds. And he said, I still visit these grounds. He said, I remember the times I had with her. So I remember, I remember, so I come and visit because I remember. I just want you to know that the Lord is with you, sister. He walks with you. He dances in your intercession. And the labor of love, the labor of love that you, you've shown and given the house, one day is going to be worth it all. God bless this elder in Jesus' name. Bless this elder. Bless this elder. In Jesus' name. All right, I'm going to try to get to my scriptures, y'all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Listen, y'all can sit down at this point. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to <laughs> But know this. That in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure that, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. Turn away. Don't turn to them. Turn away. For this, for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Now as Janice and Jambres, I guess that's how you pronounce it, resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ. Catch this. In Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 
Listen, God is just telling me, he said, there's so many of his people that are praying against persecutions. God, I don't want to go through persecution. God is saying, that's not my word. You're going to go through persecutions and afflictions. This is the will of the Father. This is his will. He's not worried about the word that they're giving you. He's worried about the condition of the heart. Acts chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. Let it be known to you all and all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there any salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must. Everybody say we must. We must must be saved. Lord God, we invite you in. Thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. God, I get out of the way. Have your way, Father. In Jesus' name. The title of my message that I'm going to try to go through, I don't know how many minutes I've burned already, is tearing down the infrastructure of self. Tearing down the infrastructure of self. The Apostle Paul was, was prophesying to a younger Timothy of perilous times that will be upon the earth. And not one time did he mention uh, earthquakes and and hurricanes and, and, you know, the the land being torn up by, by nature. He said that in the last days, perilous times will come and this is how you will recognize these perilous times. For men will be lovers of themselves. That the last days will be a dangerous place because men will begin to put more value in their opinions than in the word of God. The last days will be perilous because men will walk away from holiness. The last days will be perilous because men will find their needs being met in pleasures of the world rather than relying and depending upon God. If you find yourself relying on a bottle or a pill, on a pleasure that you know goes against the word of God, in the last days are you a part of the problem or the solution? What are you giving yourself to? In in those days, you're going to see men that build beautiful temples for God, but the Spirit of God will not dwell in those temples. They won't operate in the fullness of God because they will settle for a form of godliness. Are you chasing after a form or the fullness? Are you settling for a form of God? It's vaguely familiar and it looks similar. When we chase after a form and we we dwell in temples that are, 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 they only have a form of godliness, then that's when we can get comfortable. See, you can be in a church full of fullness, but you're still chasing a form. Why? Because your infrastructures have already been built. You've created the safe haven for yourself and said, God, I'm going to dwell here. God, you're not welcome here. Because I'm just satisfied with a form of you and not the fullness of you. And God being the loving God that he is, he still chases after you. Because he sees that the form that the foundation is built upon is about to crumble. Wow. 
Don't chase after form when you can have the fullness. Understand that when there is only a form of godliness, you are walking in the fullness of deception. You are allowing yourself to be deceived. We have a sovereign God in our midst. And God is trying to tear down some things that he sees that if we keep going in the direction that we're going, that we will not be with him for eternity. This is a serious matter for the church. It's time that we begin to walk after the depthness of God. Growing in God. We can't stay comfortable where we are. We must allow God to tear down the infrastructures that we've built for ourselves. If I could write a letter back to the Apostle Paul regarding this prophecy he, he gave young Timothy, I would write, Paul, you were 100%. You were absolutely correct. Because I am living in a time where men only think about themselves. Listen, funny story. <laughs> Talking to Mama B, you know, Mama B will set you up. <laughs> she, she was telling me, she was like, you know what? God talked to me. Pastor, man, it was a beautiful story. She said, God talked to me. You know, I was driving down the road and I saw this man and, and he, was, he, was a, he was a panhandler. Or he, was a, he was homeless and, and he asked for money and I said, I don't have any money. And then God prompted her to turn around. And when she went, turn around, he was gone. And God said, there was an angel, right? And I'm like, God, I want to experience an angel, right? So I go work out at Planet Fitness. There's this homeless guy that, that lives or sleeps by the, uh, by the gym. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to get this guy some money, right? The first person I see, I'm going to give some money because I want to experience an angel. So this guy, he's sleeping, which at first I thought it was a woman. <laughs> he had a blanket on, and all I saw was curly hair, and his feet were sticking out. So I got out of the truck. It's 4.30 in the morning. I'm like this, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. And I'm like, you know what? Why am I waking somebody up at 4.30 in the morning? I'm going to go back to my truck. And God said, no, wake him up. So I go back. I said, excuse me, ma'am. And this dude popped his head out. He's like, what's up, bro? I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I said, man, look, I got $20 for you, player. You know? And I'm expecting him to be like, oh, man, thank you, man, so much, brother. And I was going to witness to him. He was going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, man. This is what he did. He said, appreciate you. I was like, the audacity. I got in my truck and the guy was like, now how did that make you feel? <laughs> Remove yourself out the way. <laughs> you still have some issues you're dealing with. We want God to, to give us these trophies every time we do something good. And we want to be recognized, right? I give to charities and I give to the poor and, I, and we want to be recognized. Why are we chasing an earthly crown? Listen, when you chase after an earthly crown, you lose out on your eternal reward. These last days we have men killing each other. Like there's a natural lack of affection. This world is full of truce breakers and false accusers. Men that prey upon sinful women with diverse lusts. We even have books on how to love yourself. How do you fall in love with yourself? If you come to the knowledge of God, you understand that I am full of sin. Why would I fall in love with my sin? It's okay to walk in confidence in who you are. But when you have the revelation that my identity is in Christ, that's the confidence I walk in. God wants to tear down the infrastructure of self so we can walk in his fullness. We 
have people saying, you know, you can be whoever it is that you want to be. It's your choice. And we don't rely on God to tell us, Lord, who do you want me to be? Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to talk to? Are we sounding like the world or the remnant? God's people know how to humble themselves and pray and intercede for the lost. What would happen when someone walks up to you, offends you, and God prompts you, hey, this person needs prayer. Are you willing to pray for this person or will you walk in that offense? God is wanting to take house of prayer to a deeper level. But first, he wants to unmask us and begin to show us things that we're hiding. I was witnessing to a guy in a barbershop. It was like 25 guys. And if you ever been, if you ever been in a, and I hate to say it like this, but this is just the world we live in, in, in a black barbershop, <laughs> Listen, we talk about everything. <laughs> Who's the best comedians, the best fighters, the best rappers, and R&B, who would have, like we have these type conversations. Well, one guy said something, and <laughs> he said something, oh, you Bible, you Bible thumpers, or you, you holy rollers, and that, my antennas went up past, I said, Rip. I identify as one of those, brother. <laughs> that, if I'm going to identify as that, it's going to be a child of God. You can have all this other stuff. But when I, when I hear the name of Jesus being thrown across, hold on, who's talking about my father? <laughs> hold on, now you're talking about family, because we ain't about to have that. <laughs> It's about to go down. <laughs> and so he said something about the, the Holy Rollers. And we got, we got to talking about the Bible and, and doctrine. And I just had this Holy Ghost boldness came over me. Now, it's about 25 guys in here. And I began to preach the word of God and the gospel. And there's one guy that started all the mess. God just... I was just gravitated towards him. He, he just began to open up and he said, man, really, everything you're saying is making sense. He said, but I'm scared of the truth, so I run from it. I don't know how to handle the truth. Listen, th- these are the people that we should be seeking after. We need to learn how to get through all of that other stuff. Man, do you know, you've been through the trenches, the persecutions and the affliction. God, where is this coming from? Why am I suffering in my body? Why are they talking about me? It's because you've been effective to the kingdom. God is doing something. The spirit world is being turned upside down because now you have this Holy Ghost boldness and you're not ashamed to proclaim the name of God. Every step that you take, you, you're an ambassador for Christ. That's the bride. That's the people, the remnant that God is coming back for. He's not coming back for a timid church. He's coming back for a church that knows how to die on the altar. Tearing down the infrastructure of self. These these are why that's why the hard season they're good for us. And we pray, God, get us out of the, why, why am I going through this season? God, get me out of this season. No. God said, I'm trying to do something in you. I'm, tr- I'm trying to produce something in you. I'm trying to get some things out of you. 
Don't look at the affliction and the persecution through the eyes and the lens of carnality because now you, all you'll see is your failures. But when you begin to humble yourself in that season, you begin to put on the lens of Christ and say, God, I understand why I'm going through this because yes, I am a man of sin and failure, but God, it's only because your blood that I can make it another day. Self, what is self? Self is my opinions, my truths. My worldly default settings that haven't yet been configured to heaven mode. God is trying to configure some things in us. That's why we feel the thumb and the fingers of God pressing in us and it's hurting because he's pressing our buttons. He's trying to get us get a set for heaven. Because if you're still configured for this world and that trumpet blows because you're still a product of this world, you won't see heaven. I am worth something because of Christ. I am worth something because of Christ. This man that you're looking at, listen, I've been, <laughs> another funny story. At Mandy's house, she, I was laughing on the way home after our meeting, our next step meeting. And she said her, her daughter, Hannah Grace, said, Mama, did I... <laughs> Did Corey Paul backslide at one time? Because under this, this jacket, I'm full of tattoos. And I, I've actually seen some of y'all in the stores before, and you didn't talk to me because you thought I was somebody else. I had her, but, you know, I forgive you. Uh, doing the complete opposite way. I'm not going that out. Just, and I'm like, brother, I got a word from God for you. What you running from? <laughs> and she said, did Corey Paul backslide? And I was like, where I was, I made backsliders look holy. Yeah. But the truth is, yes, I did turn my back on God, but he didn't turn his back on me. <laughs> he didn't turn his back on me, and that's the God we serve. That's the God we worship. So you're looking at a man that's whole, like, like, like Paul said, <laughs> and it's nothing that I did. It's all because of God. But in that process, God had to tear down some things in myself. And I thank God. Listen, I thank God for this, for my pastor, this man of God. I thank God for him. We was in a car one day and I was going through a season. God just took, and he said something so wise. And brother, pastor, I still use this words and... If I tell this to somebody that needs a word, I'm not going to even lie. God, forgive me. I tell them that's my word, but you gave it to me. God, forgive me. See, I confessed. You know? so don't judge me. I confessed. But he, pastor said, well, I was, I was going through a, a process, and he wrote me a check. He wrote me a check. Like, me and my wife, we didn't, we didn't have much. We didn't have barely anything. And I'm coming from a good job. And God just changed my trajectory. And this man decided to invest in me and into my ministry. Like, who would, like who would do that? that? That God would take this lowly Sinner, somebody who turned their back on God. Pick me up, dust me off. And now I'm here preaching the gospel. Listen, it's, it's nothing that I've done. But there is a place that I had to get to. Brother, if you hear me, God was talking to me about my, the men too. There's a place that us men, or we men, I'm not the best, we need to get to. 
And I'm going to read a scripture that God, has, that God gave me. It's Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. God says, I know your works. Now, when he gave me this, he said, the men of house of prayer. And it's not all men because some of us are walking in that calling. And, but if this falls on you, if you feel convicted, God is talking to you. And I want you to understand that this is a serious time. We're living in a serious time. Listen, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil and you have tested those who say they are, that they are apostles and are not and have found them liars and you have preserved or persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, my brothers, my brothers, <laughs> repent and do the first work, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from his place unless you repent. God has given me a burden for my brothers. And I know, I know, trust me, I know, Pastor and I was talking about this in, in, his, in his office. I know the pride, the fight of pride that we have, we fight daily. It's hard to die daily like Paul said. I must die daily. It's hard for a man. I understand that. We go to work. We got to be tough. We go out with our families. We got to be tough because we're the protectors, right? God says, don't come in my presence with that. With prideful prayers. God is a sovereign God. Is that the case? Don't worry about him. He's coming. He's a sovereign God. Brothers, we act all macho. God says, disarm yourself. If you can find yourself into the presence of God, God disarms us. We must condition our hearts to seek the face of God. God said this. He said, God, we're on the brink of revival. How supreme. Listen, the time is now. The time is now. The time is now. Pastor Jeff, the time is is now. Listen, like, like they used to preach back in the day, oh, revival coming. Listen, revival is now. It's now. This isn't a thing of the future. It's now. We're on the brink of revival. We have to walk in that. Every place, every establishment you walk into, while you're walking in with the spirit of revival upon you, that you have the power and the authority to, to change things around. You can change the atmosphere. Yes. We got to fall back in love with Jesus, brothers. We got to fall back in love with Jesus. <laughs> Listen, I use this as an excuse. Oh, I can't sacrifice the ministry because my family's my first ministry. But the whole time, the devil is killing my family. Brothers, you better wake up. You better wake up. The enemy is killing your family. There's a target on your family. There's a target on your kids and your wife. Because the head isn't protecting and covering the home. Fall back in love with Jesus. Fall back in love with Jesus. I was...
walking throughout my house. And I had just put my kids to bed. And right before I could, brother, pastor, I put my left, my left leg in the bed. And right before I could swing that old right, because you know when that right foot hit the, hit the, hit the bed, you out. Right? The left foot was in. I was about to swing it over, and my son screamed. I ran to him, but as I, I'm running to his room, I see spirits in my house. I see spirits in my house. Brother T. June, I'm seeing them. I felt the eeriness of them. And I'm looking at him, moving, and I'm running to his room. And I know why he's screaming. Tony's in there. She's praying for him. And I'm trying to get my son. And he's in my arms, and he's still screaming. I'm rebuking the enemy. And I can't do anything about it. Pastor, I didn't know what to do. My son is being tormented and I can't do anything about it. But throughout that day, I felt like someone was over my shoulder. I, like, like, who's behind me? I kept doing this all day. I'm in the kitchen. I'm doing this. I'm walking to the, the bathroom. I'm doing this. I get in my truck and I keep looking to the right of me because it seems like somebody's in my passenger seat. I go in my room. I sit down. And I go to study to, to preach today, and, and what I see is an angel. Pastor Jeff, I see this angel. I have never seen it like this in my life. He's in all white. His face is covered, and he's just standing there. There was no glow. There was no... I didn't hear the heaven singing holy, holy. I just saw a man in my room standing there in all white, and I was not fearful. God said... That that's the angel that's on assignment for you. Now, fast forward. I hear my son screaming. I run to his room. I'm panicking. I'm like, God, why aren't my prayers working? Why are my prayers? So I go get my, my anointing oil. I go in the kitchen. I grab my oil. God says this. He said, the first place you go pray, he said, go to your room. I'll go to my room. As soon as I, I step over the threshold, he says, now release the angel that I sent on your assignment. I said, I release you in Jesus' name. Listen, I'm standing in my doorway. This angel rushes by me. I go, I make it to my room. My wife says, all she felt was an overwhelming peace. That's the authority that you have, men. We got to get back to walking in that authority. Stop playing with God. Stop playing church. Don't be so consumed with work and earthly responsibility. Yes, we must be responsible and take care of our families. But listen, mm -mm. we can't use that as an excuse. My family is my first ministry. So I'm not going to sacrifice in the house. Listen, God is challenging some of you men. You have a calling in your life. God is calling you to serve the house. Listen, when you get under the ministry and the submission of this man of God, it covers your home. But because us as men, we analyze everything. We want to break things down. We miss out. And we leave our families open to the attacks of the enemy. Listen, if you stand, tearing down the infrastructure of self. As a team will come up, listen, we're about, I'm about to call an altar call, but I feel like the Lord is wanting to do something special. I pray for my elders. I pray for my, oh God. Listen, guys, my generation, my peers, Brandon, T. June, Ajaki, my brothers, we can't miss it. We can't let this slip away from us. <laughs> that 
This is our only shot. This, listen, we're the only way that our younger generation is going to get it. So many of them are slipping through the cracks. Because we, as, a, as men, are not lining up. Listen, we're relying on the women to be the prayer warriors and the covering in our homes. Because we run from the truth. That we as men are weak. So we run from the truth of that. But we miss out on the intimate relationship with the Father. Because we're blinded by pride. This is our shot. This is our shot, men. Young brother, this is it. I don't know who you came with. I don't know if you're here with your parents. Listen, this is it. This is our shot. The elders knew how to do it. I'm preaching right now. I'm a product of intercession and godly mentorship and godly counsel. Listen, I'm, I'm awkward as a man. I grew up fatherless. So when Bishop and pastors talk to me, I'm quiet because naturally I don't know how to react to other men. So I take in what they're saying because I don't want to miss out on anything. This is it, man. God opened me up to a scripture that he was challenging me on. In the book of Job, God asked Job a question that I feel is appropriate for us this morning. Job 38, 16 God asked Job, have you entered the springs of the sea? Or have you walked in search of the depths? My question to you, house of prayer. Have you walked in search of the depths? Are you staying in the shallows? Or are you walking in search of the depths of God? Listen, I don't know how much time I have left, Pastor. But y'all can start singing, do what you got to do. <laughs> I apologize. Come on. But if you want, if you want God to do something special in your life, if you want to walk behind the veil and then enter into a more intimate place, Now's the time. Well, we thank you for joining us today. We hope that word really blessed your heart. If you need anything from us, church, please reach out and we hope to see you soon.